What is going on here? <clears throat> hey guys, I may have to change my angle again. Let's see. Yeah, too much light, right? Oh boy, you ain't lying. Okay, let's do this. You see, this is what's beautiful. What's up, man? What's up? Okay, what's up? You can tell I have no muscles anymore. You know, I have no muscles because I haven't hit the gym yet. But glory to Jesus, by his grace and mercy, I'll be there. Just as long as you don't hate. And you can see I need to trim my beard because I'm looking older than normal. We were saying a lot, but look, look, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. I am so gorgeous. So gorgeous. And I got my favorite shirt. No, it's not. I'm kidding. How you doing, everybody? How are you doing? I pray the triune God will be glorified. The Father will be glorified. The Lord Jesus will be glorified. The Holy Spirit will be glorified in Jesus' name. The Holy Spirit will fill me for the glory of Jesus Christ. That the Holy Spirit will bless the session by his might and power. Sanctify us. Bless the internet connection to stay strong so it doesn't buffer in Jesus' name. Again, may the Father purify us, cleanse us, and wash us in the holy blood of Jesus Christ. We love you, Father. Even though I fail you, Father, I fail you daily, I ask, Father, in Jesus' name, for the sake of your Son, that you have mercy upon us. Please, Father, and be patient with us for the sake of Jesus. Purify us for the sake of Jesus. Wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ. Wash our loved ones in the blood of Jesus Christ. Wash our family members in the blood of Jesus Christ. My daughters in the blood of Jesus Christ. And Father, please fill us more with the Holy Spirit and help us to walk in union with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> to, be your, to be purified by your Holy Spirit, Father. Empowered by your Spirit to die to the flesh, to despise the flesh, not to succumb to the flesh and not to give in to the flesh with ease, but to war against the flesh, Father. Please, Bobby. Please, Lord Jesus, forgive us. Forgive me and give us the grace to truly be holy servants of Jesus, to be doers of your word. And please, Bobby, not to be just hearers or preachers that are lawless, but to obey the law of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit and take us to higher levels, to become more like Jesus Christ in holiness, in purity, in worship, in love, in self-discipline, self-control, self-constraint, self-restraint by the power of the Holy Spirit. And compassion and mercy and patience and boldness, Father. Bless this session, Father. And please, Father, when no one's watching and we're all alone, fill us with your Holy Spirit during those times to walk in union with the Spirit, to walk worthy of the Lord Jesus and not to sin, not to succumb to the flesh. Please, Bobby, we love you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. Father, bless this session. Anoint my words. Empower me by your spirit to speak truth without error, to recall the passages and to interpret them correctly by the power of your spirit, with wisdom from your spirit, knowledge from your spirit. And Father, bless everyone with wisdom and knowledge from your spirit, understanding from your spirit and power and life and love and fruit from your Holy Spirit. Destroy our flesh and the fruits of our flesh, Father. Drown us and flood us in the precious holy blood of Jesus, the lamb, your lamb, the lamb of God. Cleanse in the blood of the Lamb, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus being our shield, Father. Destroy all distractions of the enemy. <clears throat> grant us understanding, illumination. Grant me clarity of thought and speech. And help me not to be a stumbling block to my brothers and sisters, but to love them and be patient with them as I want you to be patient with me, Father. Help us to be Jesus to one another, Father. And use these sessions to take us to higher levels of devotion, of worship, of love, of obedience, of holiness, of purity, and to be doers, loving our brothers and sisters by our actions for the glory of Jesus. Please, Bobby, please have mercy on us, and please forgive me. Forgive us, please, Father. Please, Lord. Please, Lord Jesus, be patient with us and help us. Help us now. Save us from our trials and, and, and our <clears throat> struggles and our 
weaknesses and from this world and from Satan and set us apart for your glory, Lord Jesus. And Holy Spirit, shield us. You are our shield, our teacher. We yield to you in Jesus' name. Ah, Jehovah, Father, Son, Spirit. All right, good to see you guys. I turn off the lights because it was too bright, right? May the Lord Jesus be out of me and anoint the sound of my voice to be pleasing to your ears. Please, Bobby, please. Father, Son, Spirit, in Jesus' name. Okay, I'm going to continue refuting the meme. What do you mean? What do you mean? Let's see. Click on that link. That's the Muslim meme. Hopefully, by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, <clears throat> it'll take me maybe two more sessions and I'll be done with the meme. And Lord Jesus willing, I'm going to return to my exegesis of 1 Corinthians 15, 28, where Jesus Christ, the Son, will be subject to the Father. And then, <clears throat> Lord Jesus willing, if the Lord permits, if he wants to use me for, for his glory and the power of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to continue my series on Jesus' <clears throat> deity, the deity of Jesus Christ in the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, to show that these three Gospels are in complete agreement with the Gospel of John, that Jesus is Jehovah God Almighty in the flesh, distinct from the Father and the Spirit, yet one with them in essence. And then I'm going to do series on the Gospel of John. Maybe we'll go book, chapter by chapter as the Holy Spirit leads me. And we'll discuss other issues in time. <clears throat> I do plan on building a database if the Lord Jesus empowers me to do so and the Holy Spirit enables me to do so and keeps me pure and holy, not a hypocrite, but a doer of the word of the Lord and gives me the wisdom and the health that I need to glorify Jesus Christ. I'm going to have a database where I'm going to be refuting Zechariah, Naik, Shibrali, Ahmadidat, others, as well as specific cults, more particularly the Joe's Witnesses and Unitarians. In time, I want to build up the YouTube channel, <clears throat> build up my blog, for the glory of Jesus Christ, as long as the Holy Spirit purifies me to be holy and a doer of his word and gives me the health I need and the provisions, right? So stick around. Don't, don't abandon ship. Pray for more people to come, to subscribe, to like. Download these videos. Download my articles to your YouTube channels, to your blogs, to your websites. Dis, you know, <laughs> Disseminate them. Spread them far and wide, right? Print them out. Use them in your Bible studies and your churches, right? Just one thing I ask, don't sell them. Freely you receive, freely you shall give, right? In Jesus' name. So we love the Father. We love the Son, the Lord Jesus. We love the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Sam. In Jesus' name, Sam, as the Lord Jesus blesses the internet connection, in Jesus' name, this year I'm going to lose 50 more pounds before the year is over and keep it off by the power of the Holy Spirit as he gives me the grace to do it. Thank you, Sam, for the encouraging words. And hopefully I'll build my muscles, slowly but surely. It hasn't been easy because I'm trying to settle. I'm trying to settle, right? I'm trying to get planted here in this new state. So guys, pray. Zena, good to see you. I miss you, sister. Pray. I signed the lease. I move in my new place February 15. Pray my brother joins me, helps me financially to remove some of the financial burden so that I'm able to to take care of my angels and able to stand on my feet and do the work of the Lord Jesus for his glory. So pray. It's a big step. This is the first time in my life that I've had to go and get my own place because for the past 10 years, uh, everything I did, I did with my ex-wife, right? And she was great in those areas, right? She was great. I have to say she's, she was a phenomenal mother, a great mother to my daughters great mother to my daughters and she did everything she could to make their life comfortable so praise jesus for that pray god will convict her bring her back to the feet of jesus and protect my daughters and heal my heart to have no hatred no anger right so keep praying we pray in jesus name we get this up 66 come on it's close to 200 i'm dropping again what's happening see people can only handle so much of me all right, big step before you, but small step for our Father. Amen, amen. And Sam, thank you for the encouraging words. You've noticed I lost a lot of weight, huh? Pray I lose more and keep it off and never gain it again. All right, Netta, good to see you. Good to see every one of you. Irene, good to see you. I may do a second session if you guys are up for it, but it seems like uh, instead of getting more people, people are dropping like flies because there's only so much of me that a person can take in. But I may do a second session. Here is the link. 
I'm going to now focus on this part of the, the Muslim meme. If you guys haven't been following me, please make sure to keep up by listening to the previous sessions. This is now the third session I'm doing on this Muslim meme. And the theme of the meme is basically this. The church, the church, thank you, Zina. Only someone that loves me would be so honest with me and say that I get annoying. But I thought you like it when I shout in your face and put you in your place. Anyway, according to this meme, the church teaches doctrines contradicted by the Lord Jesus Christ in the Bible. That's the point of the, the meme. If you click on the link, here it is. Please, we're going to deal with Mark 12, 29. Hopefully, you'll understand what Mark 12, 29 means and what it doesn't mean and how the context of Mark 12, 29 proves the Trinity if you continue reading. So we're going to focus on that part of the meme. Let me repeat that part of the meme. I mentioned it yesterday in the previous session, the day before. Here. What church teaches you? So the church teaches us God exists as three persons. That's the right, the right of the meme, to my right. To the left, they cite Mark 12, 29, where our Lord Jesus Christ says, the Lord our God is one Lord. You see, you Christians, your church has deceived you, misled you. Your church has deceived you, misled you, because it has taught you God is three persons. But Jesus says, Jesus says, the Lord our God is one Lord. So we're going to deal with that. Now, in the meantime... Here is an article from my blog that I'm posting because this article, what happened here? Oops, sorry. That's what happens when you, uh, this article is part seven in an ongoing series where I use the Jehovah Witness Bible, the New World Translation, to prove the Trinity from their own corrupt Bible. The reason why I want you to click on this link and save this article is because it is indirectly related to the topic of God being Israel's one Lord. Because in this particular article, I use the Jehovah's Witness Bible to prove that Jesus is Lord of Lords, King of Kings, and therefore he is the one Lord of Israel. He is Jehovah in the flesh. So here, let me give you the article again. Okay. Give you the article again. Click on that article, save the link, and then I give you links to the previous parts in the session. It's now part seven in an ongoing series where I use the Jehovah's Witness Bible to prove the Trinity. This particular one, I use the Jehovah's Witness Bible to show that Jesus is King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and therefore must be Jehovah in the flesh. Therefore, he's the one Lord of all creation, let alone the one, one Lord of Israel. So as the Holy Spirit loosens my tongue to speak clearly and save me from error and bless you and fill you for the glory of Jesus, let's begin. Is it not true that Jesus said that the Lord, our God, is one Lord? If he's one Lord, why do you worship three persons as God? So let's look at the context. As the Holy Spirit anoints me, grants me unction and blesses you and saves us from error for the glory of Jesus Christ, that Jesus will increase in us and we decrease. Please, Lord, sit and throne on our hearts and sit and throne upon the hearts of my daughters. Please, my God, we love you, Father, Son, Spirit. Okay, I have to have my McDonald's coffee. Okay. Mark 12, 28 to 34. Let's break it down. And then maybe I'll have a few minutes for question and answers. I'll do a session where I'll just take your questions. So write them out, write them down. I'm on. All right. I don't know if you're saying amen or you're saying I'm a man. Amen. Bla Tino Capone or Bia Tino. I don't know. Amen. Let's read Mark 12, 28 to 34. And we pray the regular cr crowd shows up. All right. Mark 12, 28 to 34. Let's read because here you're going to learn how to interpret scripture and how not to butcher scripture by taking verses out of context. Okay, let's read. And one of the scribes came and having heard them, reasoning together and perceiving that he had answered them well. He perceived that Jesus answered them well. Asked him, asked the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the first commandment of all? By first he means which is the greatest commandment, the most important commandment, the foremost commandment. Notice our Lord's response. And Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, 
the Lord our God is one Lord. So he's now quoting Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. Please, by the power of the Holy Spirit, remember these points. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4, along with verse 5. And Deuteronomy 6, 4 is called the Shema. At the time of Jesus, at the time of Jesus, the Jews would recite what's known as the Shema, Deuteronomy 6, verse 4, at least twice a day. At least twice a day, they would recite this as a reminder that Israel's God is the one Jehovah. The one Jehovah is Israel's God, and they have no other God. Zeus is not their God. <clears throat> Hermes is not their God. You know, And they'll tell you that Jupiter is simply another name for Zeus, and that Zeus is actually another name for Baal, Baal or maybe even Il. Anyway, be that as it may, Israel's God is the one Jehovah. That's what the Shema is meant to instill, right? Engrave in the hearts and minds of the Israelites. And then he quotes Deuteronomy 6, 5. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. But then he goes on, Mark 12, 31. And the second is like it, namely this. And the second is like, namely this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. So now let's see how the, the, the man answered the Lord. Verse 32, let's read. And the scribe said unto him, Well, master, thou hast said the truth. You said the truth. For there is one God, and there is none other but he. There is one God, and there is none other but he. Okay, pay attention. So Israel's one Lord is the one God. The one God of Israel is the one Lord. So if you are the one Lord of Israel, you're the one God. If you're the one God, then you're the one Lord of Israel. Do you see how it works? Israel's God is the one Lord, and the one Lord of Israel is the one God. If you're the one Lord, you're the one God. If you're the one God, you're the one Lord. Notice the terms are interchangeably being used. They're synonymous. If you're the one Lord, you're the one God. If you're the one God, you're the one Lord, particularly if you're dwelling in heaven. I just want to make sure this is sinking, and as the Holy Spirit illuminates me, Enlightens me to illuminate you being used of the Spirit so you can go into the meat of Scripture and understand the depth of Scripture and the beauty of Scripture for the glory of Jesus. Okay? Now let's read 33, 34, what our Lord says. All right? 33. <clears throat> and to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the soul and with all the strength and to love his neighbor as himself is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. Now notice our Lord's response. And when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly, he answered wisely. Discreetly means he answered wisely. He said unto him, thou art not far from the kingdom of God. And no man after that durst ask him any question. What I want you to pay attention from the get-go is what the Lord Jesus did not say. Notice what the Lord Jesus did not say. You guys with me? He didn't say you are in the kingdom of God. You have entered into the kingdom of God. You have arrived at the kingdom of God. He goes, no, you are not far from the kingdom of God. You're not there yet. You're not far, but you're not there yet. Clear to everyone? Did it make, before I move on, are you getting it? Let's look at 34 one more time. Let's look at 34 one more time. Okay. And when Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said unto him, thou art not far from the kingdom of God. So you're not there yet. You're close, but not close enough. Why? Because your, pit, your understanding of God, your view of God, though accurate, is incomplete. It's incomplete. So are you ready for me now to unpack the meat of this particular section? How this very chapter ends up proving the triunity of God and proving that Jesus is God in the flesh, one with the Father and the Spirit. This very chapter, by the way. I won't use any other chapter, but this chapter to prove my case that Jesus includes himself within the identity of the one Lord God of Israel. But I need you guys to focus. Shalom, Lord. Why are you asking me why is it incomplete? Because the man's knowledge of the nature of God is still incomplete and Jesus is going to fill it out. What do you mean? Why? Because if it was complete, then Jesus would say, you have entered the kingdom. 
you are not far, meaning you still haven't entered the kingdom yet. Let me help you enter by completing your understanding of who the one Lord God is. Okay. So save those links. Here's the link to my article again. And I'm going to give you the Greek of Mark 12, 29 and 32 so we can unpack the meat. Okay. Here's the link to that Jehovah Witness post where I use the Jehovah Witness Bible to prove Jesus is Jehovah God in the flesh, their own Bible. Okay. Now, with that said, let's go to the interlinear Greek of Mark. And I'm going to give you a resource that's available online for free. It's BibleHub.com, one of the best Bible resources that is online completely free. Okay? You don't even need to read Greek or Hebrew to see what the Greek and Hebrew terms are. Mark 12, 29. Click on it. Follow with me. Let's read what it says. Here's what our Lord says. Mark 12, 29. Oh, I'm sorry. I gave you Matthew. My, um, hold on. Sorry. It's Matthew. No wonder it didn't look. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Mark 12, 29. I hope Zena is listening instead of starting problems and fighting with the world. Divide and conquer. That's what Assyrians do, especially Assyrian women. All right. Mark 12, 29. Answer Jesus. Apikrathe. 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 O Jesus. Hati. Israel. Esteem. Akue. Akue Israel. Now here, I'm not trying to impress you, impress you with my speaking Greek because I'm butchering it, right? But anyway, I want you to pay attention. He's quoting Deuteronomy 6.4, and he quotes it. I'm now going to pronounce it what's known as the Erasmian pronunciation, not as a native Greek speaker would pronounce it. Uh, kurios, or they would say Kyrios. Kurios, ha theos, hemon, kurios, heis estin. This is the Erasmian pronunciation. I'm sure a Greek speaker here would say, what in the world did he say? Well, that's how they teach you to pronounce the Greek of the New Testament in colleges and seminaries, Bible colleges and seminaries. But it's, I know a Greek speaker would say, Kyrios o Theos, Emon, Kyrios, Is, Estin. All right. Now, I want you to pay attention to the phrase, Kyrios, Heis, Estin. Kyrios, Is, Estin. Here, I'm on Translator right here. Pay attention to this. Okay. Kurius is Estin. Estin. Kurius Heis. Okay. Some will, will transliterate. Yeah, I'm sure you follow some spirit. Bless Jesus' name in Jesus' name. All the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Lord. Sorry, guys. It's buffering. That's the connection. Sorry about that. Okay. Some will transliterate it as Kurius. Ice, Estin. Okay, now let me break down the word. Kurios is the word Lord. Ice, or Is, is the word one. Estin, also Esti, sometimes the, the end, the new is, is removed, means is. So it says, Lord, one is. Lord, one, he is. Are you with me there? Kurios, Kurios. Kurios is the Greek word for Lord. The word is or heis is the word for one. Now, this is the Greek rendering of Deuteronomy 6.4. This is the Greek rendering of Deuteronomy 6.4. Thank you. He just wrote out the Greek for you. First and last, who can read Greek, God bless him, and bless all the admins and bless all of you. He actually just gave you the Greek. Kyrios is estin, or kurios heis estin, okay? I transliterated it so you can at least know how to say it by replacing the Greek letters with English letters. So did, is everyone with me that the Greek word for Lord is one is kurios heis, Lord one. Kyrios is do you guys get that? You got to get it. If you don't get it, then I'm going to confuse you and you won't make the connection. Notice Jesus is quoting the commandment. He's quoting Deuteronomy 6 verse 4. So let's post Deuteronomy 6 verse 4 to see why looking at the Greek is significant because the Greek words used 
for the Hebrew, because Deuteronomy 6.4 is in Hebrew. But the Greek words used for the Hebrew end up proving that Jesus is the one Jehovah of Israel. He's included in the identity of Jehovah, so that Jehovah, who is the God of Israel, is not just the Father. Jehovah is the Father with his Son and the Spirit. And I'm going to prove that step by step as the Holy Spirit guides me so I don't confuse you. Deuteronomy 6.4 in Hebrew, not Greek. We don't need the Greek anymore because Mark 12, 29 gave you the Greek first and last. I'll forgive you. Deuteronomy 6.4. Now, guys, Deuteronomy 6.4, it's hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Now, the Hebrew goes like this. Listen to the Hebrew. Shema Yisrael. Hear, O Israel. Shema, Shme, Shmi. If you guys speak Assyrian or Chaldean, you know what the word Shema means. We use it till now. Shmi. Shme. And if we're talking to a crowd, we say Shmimun, right? For you Assyrian speakers who speak Syriac, an offshoot of Aramaic, right? Choose Jesus and Zena. I know they at least speak Assyrian or Chaldean, which is the same, right? Have you have you ever heard of Shmi? Shme? Shmimun? Right? Anyway, so cognate languages. Shema Yisrael. Now notice the Hebrew. Yahovah. It's the divine name known uh, called the te uh, Tetragrammaton. The Tetragrammaton. The four consonants representing the divine name. Yod, He, Vav, He. Yod, He, Vav, He. Shema Yisrael. Yod, He, Vav, He. Pronounced as Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahovah, Yahovah. Eloheinu Yehovah Echad. The tetragrammaton. Tetragrammaton. Okay, now, the Hebrew word that the English translated as one Lord, the Hebrew words that the King James translated as one Lord is Yahweh for the word Lord, and the word for one is Echad. So the Hebrew words which the King James translators rendered as is one Lord, are Yahweh Echad. Yahweh Echad. Yehovah Echad. Jehovah Echad. What does that mean? Yahweh Echad. It's Jehovah One. Jehovah is one. Jehovah is one. Now, the King James rendered Yahovah, Yahweh Echad, as is one Lord. Now, let's post the, the King James translation one more time. I hope I'm not boring you with this stuff. I'm not confusing you because I'm hoping to unpack the depth, the beauty, the meat of Scripture. Because you're going to see how this is going to prove that Jesus is God. All right? Let's look at the King James rendering one more time. Deuteronomy 6, verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Now, do you see in the King James, the word Lord is all capitals, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. It put the divine name in all capitals. Why? So that the, the, the readers who are reading the translation will know by the capitalization of every word in the term Lord, in Hebrew, it's the divine name. So when you, the reader, see the word Lord, all capitals, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Notice they're all capitals. It's not just the L that's capital. That's an indication by the translators to the reader. In the Hebrew, the divine name, the tetragrammaton, uh, the tetragrammaton, the four consonants appear so that the word Lord in all capitals is signifying to you that in Hebrew, it's Yahovah. It's Yahweh, Yahweh, Jehovah. Right? When you see the word Lord, all capitals, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, that's an indication. The translator is trying to inform you, indicate to you, that in the Hebrew, it's the divine name, what we call the tetragrammaton, the four consonants, Y-H-V-H, Yod-Heh, 
Vav He, it's the name Jehovah. So everyone got it? You understand? Why all capitals? Why is it that in your English translations, many of them will capitalize the word Lord in certain places, but not in uh, other places capitalize every letter in the word Lord? Capitalizing the L, the O, and the R, and the D. It's not just King James. Because they're letting you know that the Hebrew manuscripts that they're translating from, it's the divine name. It's the word yod He vav He, Yahovah, Yahweh, Yahweh, Jehovah, right? Tetragrammaton. I believe so, Sergun, yes. I've been told that they render it as Maria, Lord Jehovah. So do you see that the English rendering is one Lord? That English rendering, that phrase, is a translation of the Hebrew words Yahweh Echad, Jehovah's One. So you understand, to say Lord is One, right? One Lord is simply the English way of saying Yahweh Echad, Jehovah is One, One Jehovah. You got that so far? You got that so far? Amina, you're here again? Poor guy got schooled in Discord and he wants to now save face here. Don't worry, Amini. I will set up my Skype so that I can have you live, so I can decimate you and your false prophet for the glory of Jesus. And I have fun at your own expense. And Muhammad's expense. But now I want everyone else to pay attention. Learn. Yahovah Echad. Yahweh Echad. Is rendered in our English Bibles. There are some exceptions. Like the New Jerusalem Bible. Retains the translation of the divine name. It says Yahweh. World English Bible also uses Yahweh. American Standard Version uses Jehovah. And we know the Jehovah Witness Bible uses Jehovah. But... <clears throat> The majority of English translations render Yahweh Echad, Yahovah Echad, as Lord is one, one Lord. If you're with me so, right, so far, let's see how the Greek rendered the phrase Yahweh Echad. Yahweh Echad. Okay? Let's see how the Greek rendered this phrase. Yahweh Echad, Yahovah Echad. Are you ready now? Let's look at the Greek again. If I'm confusing you, please let me know because I want to make sure I don't leave this point until it sinks in, becomes second nature by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because once you learn this argument, you will become a Unitarian, anti Trinitarian nightmare. I promise you. These are battle tested arguments. Okay. Here is. Mark 12, 29's rendering of this verse in Deuteronomy 6, 4, rendering it into Greek. Here's the link. Mark is written in Greek. It renders Deuteronomy 6, 4 into Greek. So most likely Jesus would have said these words in Aramaic. Jesus would have said these words in Aramaic, but Mark translates them in Greek. Now, when Mark, and we believe he's inspired by the Holy Spirit. Now, this dog is barking that the Trinity defies formal logic. He doesn't know his God defies formal logic. These guys have no shame. A guy who follows a woman raping, molesting, pedophile, who kissed and smothered a black stone, who says the Quran is uncreated eternal, and it's not Allah, it's other than Allah. So now you have two eternal entities. And they still claim God is one, has the audacity to talk about logic. And you tell me these guys are not Muhammad's dogs? Anyway, Lord Jesus, rebuke Satan and keep us focused. Now, here is the link to here is the link to the Greek of Mark. When our Lord Jesus quoted Deuteronomy 6:4, most likely he quoted it in Aramaic, but Mark by inspiration translates that discussion into Greek. Now, when you click on that link and see the Greek, the Greek for Yahovah Echad 
is Perius is Prias Heights. Does everyone see? The Greek renders Yahweh Echad, Yahweh Echad as Kyrios East or Kyrios Heights, if you want to pronounce it the Rasmin way. You guys see the point I'm trying to make, and I'm going to go very slow. No, John Doe, Echad doesn't always refer to plurality. Don't make that mistake. Don't jump the gun. Don't bring up irrelevant issues. You're going to embarrass yourself with someone who knows the Hebrew Old Testament and who happens to be an anti-Christian like Tovia Singer, he'll embarrass you and show you that Ichad doesn't always refer to plurality. Don't make that stupid mistake. Just listen and learn by the grace of God. And I say to see, Abd al-Halaj. Abd al-Halaj reads Hebrew and Aramaic. He just said, correct. Abd al-Halaj, was I right? There are places in the Tanakh, in the Hebrew Old Testament, Ichad does not refer to plurality. Guys, help me to help you. I promise you, I'm trying to give you the best arguments possible, arguments that we've tested in spiritual battle by the power of the Holy Spirit, arguments that if you learn, you cannot be refuted. No one can refute them honestly and consistently. Okay? For your benefit, believe me, it's for your benefit because I know this stuff, right? I don't need to be speaking it, speaking it unless... It's for your benefit that I want to share this so you can be the best you can be for the glory of Jesus. Okay, now, follow with me. Yahovah Echad, or Yahweh Echad, is translated in the Greek of Mark 12, 29 as Kyrios Is, or the Rasmian pronunciation, Kurios Heights. So, Jehovah is one. It's translated as... Lord is one in the Greek. Lord is one in the Greek. In other words, the Hebrew word Yahovah is rendered in Greek as Kyrios, Kurios. Everyone with me? So far, are you with me? And Protestants, let me know how they're doing on Discord. If there's anyone has questions on Discord, let me know. On this topic. Okay. If you're with me, if there's someone confused, just say, Sam, I'm not getting it. Zine, are you getting it? Choose Jesus, you're getting it? Right? Okay. If you're getting it, that means you now understand that when you speak to a Greek-speaking Jew... If there was a Greek-speaking Jew at the time of Jesus and you said to him, listen, if you said to him, is Kyrios, or if you want to say it the Rasmin way, Heis Kurias, or if you said to him, Kyrios is Esteem, Kurias Heis Esteem, one Lord, Lord is one. To a Greek-speaking Jew, you just said to him, Jehovah's one, Yahovah Echad. You hear me there? To say to a Greek-speaking Jew, Kyrios is, Kyrios heis, right? Kyrios is esteem, Kyrios heis esteem. Or is Kyrios, heis Kyrios. You just said to him in Greek, Yahovah Echad, Yahovah Echad, Jehovah's one. And see, Abd al-Halaj says, I already know what you say, I confirm it, see? It's just like a modern Hebrew speaker today, he does not say, and test me on this, Abdel Halaj will, admit, will confirm. At the time of Jesus, and even now, those who did pray in Hebrew substituted the word Yahovah for Adonai. So they wouldn't say Shema Yisrael, Yahovah Eloheinu, Yahovah Echad. They would say Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, I'm sorry, yeah, Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. They substituted Jehovah for Adonai. Adonai is the Hebrew word translated as Lord. You with me there? You with me there? 
Adonai is the Hebrew way of saying Lord, like Kyrios, Kyrios is the Greek way of saying Lord. So Jews who spoke Hebrew would replace Yahovah with Adonai, and Jews who spoke Greek would replace Yahovah with Kyrios, Kyrios. And today, Orthodox Jews don't even say Adonai. They say Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad. Hashem means the name. They won't even say Adonai when you're talking to them. They don't even say Elohim. They mispronounce it deliberately, Elohim. Why? Because they don't want to sin and take God's name in vain. That's how extreme the rabbis have become. They don't say Elohim when you're talking to them. They'll say Elohim. They will deliberately mispronounce the names of God because they don't want to sin by taking God's name in vain. So they'll say Hashem, the name. And they'll say Elohim instead of Elohim. You guys aware of this? Just want to make sure it's sinking in. A lot of meat to cover. Exactly. Even in writing, love light. Even in writing, they don't spell God as G-O-D. They do G-D. L-D. Right? So... I'm going to go real slow with this until it sinks in. Well, because Terb, what the rabbis did was they put a fence around the Torah, fencing the Torah. They came up with all these complicated traditions, so it would become impossible for you to violate the cans. They added these traditions with good intention. What do I mean? In their mind, they were fencing the Torah protecting people from violating the Torah by adding all these traditions so that it would become virtually impossible to violate the Torah. But in so doing, they added to the word of God and increased the burdens upon people that they could not carry anymore. Exactly, Jonathan Simon. They were overprotecting the Torah and overprotecting themselves from violating the Torah. So their intention was good. Let's safeguard ourselves and our people from violating the Torah and bringing God's wrath. So let's fence the Torah, fencing the Torah, by coming up with these traditions, making it virtually impossible to violate the Torah, but in increasing and adding tradition, they made the Torah unbearable for people. You with me there? What is that saying? The path to hell is paved with good intentions, right? Have you heard of that saying? The path to hell is paved with good intentions. Beautiful example with the rabbis, rabbinic Judaism. Their intention was good to safeguard the Torah, to put a fence around the Torah, to prevent the Jews from violating it and bringing God's wrath. But again, the path to hell oftentimes is paved with, paved with good intentions. Right? Clear? Okay, but coming back to the issue. If you got this, we're almost home. I want to give you meat by the power of the Holy Spirit who has mercy on us and forgives us and washes us in the blood of Jesus and still uses us when we sin and then convicts us and transforms us to walk in holiness and to conquer our sins for the glory of Jesus. Right? I want you to understand this. Folks, if you study the arguments and these sessions, the articles, I promise you, not because I'm special. I am not. I am not special. I'm a maggot, a dog who deserves hell if Jesus doesn't cover me by his blood and fills me with his love. But this information that the Spirit has been pleased to bestow on us, not just me, if you learn this information, you will be soldiers by the power of the Holy Spirit, filled with the Spirit, unshaken immovable when it comes to knowing the certainty of your faith. Now, that doesn't mean you won't fall because you may be you may fall for other reasons. One thing I can guarantee you, if you are seeking the face of the Holy Spirit and you're learning these arguments, you'll have no doubt the Bible is God's word. Jesus is alive. The God of the Bible is the true God. So if you fall away, it won't be because of the lack of knowledge or the uncertainty whether the Bible is true. You'll fall away because of sin. You'll fall away because of lust. 
You fall away because of drugs. You fall away because you love money more than you love the will of God. But you won't fall away because you haven't been given enough proofs, facts, evidence that the Bible is God's word and the God of the Bible is true and real. So if you fall away, it will be because of some other reason. Sin. What kind of sin? Fornication, sexual morality, lust, adultery, money, fame, fortune, drugs. That's why you fall away. But as far as falling away because of losing faith in the Bible as God's inspired, preserved word, and the God of Bible being the true God who exists, no, because you ha you'll have received so much proofs, evidences, facts, information, wisdom, and knowledge, that excuse won't wash. You with me there? You understand? So learn these arguments. So let's go back again. Let's repeat. The Hebrew phrase, the Hebrew words, Yahovah Echad, are rendered by the Greek words, Kyrios Is Estin, Kyrios Is, or Kurias Hais. Okay, so what am, I, what am I trying to get at? If a Greek-speaking Jew heard you say in Greek, Kyrios Is, or Kurias Hais Estin, or if a Greek-speaking Jew heard you say, is Kyrios, is Kyrios, or Heis Kyrios, which is the Greek way of saying one Lord, Lord, one he is, to that Greek-speaking Jew, you just recited Deuteronomy 6.4, that part which says, Yahovah Echad. Is Kyrios, Heis Kyrios, is the Greek way of saying, Yahovah Echad. So to a Greek-speaking Jew, to say that, you're speaking of Jehovah who's one. Yahovah Echad in Greek can be rendered in two ways. Kyrios Is or Heis Estin or as Heis or Is Kyrios. Right? Everyone got that so far? Everyone got that so far? If that sunk in by the grace of God, we can now move on to the next point and continue reading in Mark 12. If that sunk in. Okay. Now, estin is the Greek word for is. Esti, estin, is. Chalilubus, Argun, I just said it. Kyrios is, or kurios heis, is Lord one. Estin means is. Esti, estin, is. Lord one. He is. We were sailing along on a moonlight bay. All right, sorry, we buffered. You better believe it's your bad. It ain't Zena's bad. Anyway, we were buffering. It's okay. Like I said, the connection's not the best here. Okay, now, remember, Kyrios is, Kurias Heis Estin, or is Kyrios, or Heis Kurias. One Lord, Lord one is he. That would be the Greek way of saying Yahovah Echad, Yahovah Echad, Yahovah Echad. Jehovah's one, Jehovah's one, Jehovah's one. I said it three times because I'm Trinitarian, right? We got that? We got that? Let's now continue to see what Jesus went on to say. Let's read Mark 12, 29 and then jump to 35 to 37. Mark 12, 29, and jump to 35 to 37. Got it, brah, brav. Right. Now read with me. Mark 12, 29, and 35, 37. Same chapter. Same chapter. Within the same context. Look what the Lord went on to say. After saying, and Jesus answered, the first of all commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. In Greek, it's uh, kyrios or kurios. 
o theos or ha theos hemon kurios kirios is heis esni okay lord the god of us lord one is he that's literally the greek okay right after saying israel your god is the one lord your god is the one lord remember israel supposed to say jehovah our god is one jehovah our god is the one jehovah our god is the one lord the one lord is our god the one jehovah is our god notice so an israelite can only say jehovah who is one is our god our god is the one jehovah that one jehovah he's our god that one lord is our god okay if you remember that notice what jesus went on to do right after telling the man you're not far from the kingdom mark 12 35 37 and jesus answered and said while he taught in the temple how say the scribes that the Christ is the son of David? Pay attention here, because he just blew the minds of his audience. Because after quoting the Shema, that Israel's God is the one Lord, the one Lord is Israel's God, he then cites another Old Testament passage to fill out the identity of Israel's God, showing that the one Lord, who's Israel's God, is more than one person. He's about to blow their mind to show them, look, Israel's God is the one Lord, but that one Lord who's Israel's God is more than one person. And I'm going to prove, prove it from the Old Testament. Watch what Jesus does. And Jesus answered and said, while he taught in the temple, how say the scribes that Christ is the son of David? For David himself said by the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit revealed to David, inspired David to say, and he quotes Psalm 110.1. One. Now the Hebrew says, Jehovah said to Adoni, Neom Yahovah la Adoni. Jehovah said to Adoni, Jehovah said to my Lord, sit down on my right hand till I make thy enemies thy footstool. Right? Now notice verse 37. For David himself said by the Holy Ghost, the Lord said to my Lord, sit down on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. And then we skip to 37. David therefore himself calleth him Lord. David calls Christ. David calls the Messiah. David calls the Mashiach, Christos, Christ, the anointed one. Calls him Lord, Kyrios. And whence is he then his son? Then how can he be his son? And the common people heard him gladly. The common people heard him gladly. Hey, David in Psalm 110, by the Holy Spirit revealing it to him, called the Christ, the Christos, Mashiach, the Christ, his Lord called him Lord. How can the Christ be his son? Here's where it gets exciting. Okay, watch here. Mark 12, 36 in the Greek. A lot of unpacking. I'm unpacking a lot to help you. If you go to Mark 12, 36, the Lord Jesus quoted Psalm 110, 1. Psalm 110, 1 literally says, Yahovah, it uses the divine name. Jehovah said to Adoni, the Hebrew word is Adon, Adon, my Adon. Jehovah said to my Lord. It's two different words in Hebrew. Yahovah, Adoni. But in the Greek, the words are the same. In the Greek, the words are the same. Okay. Go to click on it. It's Kyrios, Kyrios to Kyrio Mu. Kyrios said to my Kyrios. Kyrios said to my Kyrios. The Greek is the same. Kyrios to Kyrio Mu. To Kyrio Mu. Kyrios said to my Kyrios. They're both called Kyrios. Jehovah's called Kyrios, Kyrios. And David's Lord is called Kurias, Kirius, Kurias. They're both called Kurias, showing again that the word Jehovah is rendered in Greek by the word Kirius, Kurias. You get it there or no? And then when you go to Mark 12, 37, Mark 12, 37, here when David says, I'm sorry, when Jesus says, David calls Messiah Lord. Click there. There's the link to the Greek. It says, Autos, Dawid, 
Lege Alton Kiriun. Called him Lord. Kiriun. Called him Kirius. Kurias. David called Messiah Kurias. And he said, Messiah is my Kurias. And the word Jehovah is rendered in Greek as Kurias. Jehovah's Kurias. The Messiah's Kurias. And the Messiah is David's Kurias. Kirius. You with me there? But wait, Mark 12, 29 says, Israel's God is their one, Kyrios, Kurias. Israel's Lord is their God. Israel's God is their Lord. Israel's God is their one, Kyrios, Kurias. So now, is David an Israelite? Is David an Israelite? Is David an Israelite, folks? Come on. Help me out. As an Israelite, doesn't Mark 12, 29 apply to him as well? Where it says, Hear, O Israel, Kirius, Kurias, O Theos, Emon, the God of us, Kirius, Is, Estin, our God is the one Lord. So now, David as an Israelite, can he have more than one Lord in heaven? How many lords would David have in heaven? And you're going to see why I say in heaven. Why I say in heaven. How many lords could he as an Israelite have in heaven? In heaven, Israel's God is their one Lord. Because where is Israel's God? He's in heaven. So he is the one Lord that the Israelites look to. He is the one Lord who reigns in heaven. He is the only Lord that an Israelite can look to in heaven. So if you ask David, is your God the one Jehovah? Yes. So your God is the one Lord? Yes. And is your God Jehovah reigning in heaven? Yes. So how many Lords do you have in heaven that you look to? Only one. Jehovah. Is there any other Lord in heaven that you look to? No. But wait, David, you just said Messiah is also your Lord and he reigns in heaven. How do I know David is confessing Messiah to be his Lord in heaven? Because read what Mark 12, 36 quoted. It quoted Psalm 110.1 where David said by the Holy Spirit revealing it to him, the Holy Spirit making it known to him. Jehovah said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool. But wait, David, for the Messiah to be your Lord, seated at God's right hand, he has to be sitting in heaven with God, with Jehovah, because Jehovah is seating, seated in heaven, is sitting in heaven. So where will the Messiah sit? Oh, with Jehovah. But where is Jehovah sitting? In heaven. So how can the Messiah be seated with Jehovah in heaven? And Messiah be your Lord in heaven when you have only one Lord in heaven who is Jehovah. Making sense? Is it sinking in? Because I'm going to prove to you, for the Messiah to sit at Jehovah's right hand, he is seated in heaven with Jehovah. Let me prove it to you. Psalm 110, verse 1. Back to back, Psalm 110, verse 1. Back to back with Psalm 103, 19, verse 19, with Psalm 11, verse 4, and Psalm 2, verse 4. So Psalm 110, 1, Psalm 103, verse 19, Psalm 11, verse 4, and Psalm 2, verse 4. Let's read. Back to back. Here's the psalm that Jesus quotes. A psalm of David, Jehovah, Yahovah said unto my Lord, Adoni, my Adon, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. So if the Messiah, David's Lord, sits at God's right hand, he has to be sitting in heaven. Because notice where Jehovah is seated. Psalm 103, 19. Psalm 11, verse 4. Psalm 2, verse 4. Jehovah, the Lord, the Greek is Kyrios, Kurios, hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Psalm 11, verse 4, Jehovah, the Lord, Greek, Kyrios, Kurios, is in his holy temple. 
The Lord's throne, Jehovah's throne, the throne of Kyrios, Kyrios, is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyelids try, the children of men. Psalm 2, verse 4. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. Adonai, the Lord. Here it's Adonai, it's not Jehovah. Adonai, Greek, Kyrios, Kyrios, the Lord shall have them in derision. So if Jehovah is the Lord, Adonai, Psalm 2, 4, Adonai. Jehovah is the Lord who is seated in heaven, whose throne is in heaven, and from heaven's throne rules over all creation. For the Messiah, David's Lord, to sit at Jehovah's right hand, that means he too is sitting in heaven. Right? Right? But then it gets worse for the anti-Trinitarian, the Unitarian heretic. It gets worse. Do you know why? Psalm 113, verse 5. Psalm 113, verse 5. Psalm 113, verse 5. Watch here. Psalm 113, verse 5. Michael. What does 2 Samuel 23, 2 have to do with the point of establishing Messiah as Jehovah? You're trying hard, brother. Psalm 113, verse 5. Who is like unto Jehovah our God, who dwelleth on high? Who is like unto Yehovah, our Elohim, who dwelleth on high? The Greek rendering, who is like unto Kyrios, Kurias, who dwelleth on high? Folks, the question is rhetorical. The question is rhetorical. There is no one like Jehovah our God who dwells on high. There is no one who dwells on high and reigns from high on high besides Jehovah our God. But hold on. Hold on. Messiah dwells on high with Jehovah. So that means he's exactly like Jehovah. Yehovah. But there's no one like Jehovah. So then how can the Messiah be exactly like Jehovah, enthroned on high, because he is Jehovah. He's exactly like Jehovah the Father, because he's one with the Father, and therefore he too is Jehovah. But it's going to get better when we look at the Greek. <laughs> In me power. In me power. You guys understanding? Is it sinking in? You getting the meat? Watch the Greek here. <laughs> in me power. In me power. The Greek rendering of Psalm 113.5. The Greek rendering of Psalm 113.5. Let me get you the link. Now, the Greek rendering of Psalm 113.5, the number of the psalm is Psalm 112. For some reason, the Greek version of the Psalms number the Psalms differently. So Psalm 113 becomes Psalm 112 in the Greek translation. Okay? In the Greek translation. Okay? Here is the link to the English translation of the Greek. Now, he posted the Greek. Here it is. Now, I want you to see something. Okay. It says, Tis... Has Kyrios, there's Kyrios again. Ho Theos, or O Theus, Theos, Amon. Ho En, who is, and then I want you to see this word. Hupselois. Hupselois, this word right here. Okay, sorry for butchering the Greek. Hupselois. Hupselois. Okay, pay attention to that word. Okay, let me do it again. That's the word on high. That's the word high. O N means, right, the in high. The word hupsilois is the word high. Okay, did everyone see the Greek word? I gave you the link. I gave you the link. Notice the word Jehovah is rendered as kurios, kurios, right? You see, go to the Greek. The word Jehovah is rendered as kurios, kurios. So Jehovah our God in Greek is Kurius, Kurius, Kurias, the Lord our God, dwells on high. There's the link again. And the Greek word for a high is Hypsilois. 
Hypsilois. I'm giving you the Rasmian pronunciation. Does everyone see the Greek word? I just transliterate it for you. Do you see it? So the Lord, Jehovah, the Kyrios, our God, he is on Hypsilois, on high. High, Hypsilois. I'm hard to make it as clear, sensible, understandable as possible. Are you getting it? Are you getting it? Because here's where I want you to be blown away by what the New Testament says. Blown away by what the New Testament says. See, if you know the New Testament and you know the Old Testament and you're studying the Old Testament and looking at the Greek translation of Old Testament texts employed in the New Testament, then you're going to see even greater proof, stronger proof, more irrefutable evidence that Jesus is Jehovah God and God is a Trinity. Okay, remember that word, hypsilois. Pay attention. Because that very word is used in one specific place in the New Testament. It's used in Hebrews 1, 3. Quote Hebrews 1, verse 3. Yep, that's where we get the word hyper, hypsilois. Hebrews 1, 3, quoted, who being the brightness of his glory and express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, pay attention to the last sentence. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Bam. Guess what the word high is in Greek? There is. Hupsilois, it's the same Greek word. Hupsilois. Jesus too is on Hupsilois. Jesus too is on high with the Father. Wow. Do you guys get it? The Greek version of Psalm 113 says. There's no one like the Lord our God who is on high. But Hebrews 1.3 says, Hebrews 1.3 says, Jesus too sits on high. Hypsilois with the Father. Sorry, I'm buffering. Yeah. Buffering. Exactly. Alex Gaskin, he is like Jehovah, meaning Jehovah the Father, because he is Jehovah, though he's not the Father. Did everyone get it? And by the way, Protestant, can you let me know if the people in Discord got it? Here is the link to the Greek. Click on it, it says that Jesus sat on the majesty on high. Hypsilois. Jesus is now seated on high. Hypsilois. The Greek of Psalm 113 says, there is no one besides Jehovah who sits on high. Jehovah our God, and the word Jehovah rendered in Greek as Kyrios, Kurios, the Lord our God, he alone is on high, Hypsilois. So if Jehovah is the only one who is on high, Hypsilois, but Jesus is seated with the Father on high, Hypsilois, you either got a contradiction or Jesus, like the Father, is that Jehovah God. Which is why he can be David's Lord, even though David, as an Israelite, only has one Lord in heaven, who is his God, Jehovah. Did everyone get it? I want that to sink in. I don't know about that term. Pray I can be the best I can possibly for Jesus, not teach only teaching, but living for the glory of Jesus. So did it did it make sense? Did it sink in? Now, what you just read is that Jesus, being David's Lord, being Lord, Kyrios, who sits enthroned on high with the Father, proves that Jesus is included. In the identity of Israel's God, who is their one Lord. He is included 
in the identity of the one Lord who is the God of Israel, because Israel's God is the one Lord, the one Jehovah. And if you read that chapter and you continue reading, Jesus goes on to unpack the identity of the one Lord of Israel. Israel's God is the one Lord, as including the person of the Father and the Messiah, Christ Jesus, his son. So Jesus went on to identify Israel's God, who is the one Lord, as consisting of at least two persons, the Father and the Messiah, his son. So why would someone stop at Mark 12, 29 and fail to read all the way to 37 to see why Jesus said to the man, you are not in the kingdom yet. You're not too far, but you're still not in it because you need to learn a little more about the one God of Israel, about Israel's one Lord. And let me tell you who that one Lord of Israel happens to be. It includes the Father and the Messiah, his son, and that's me. And that's me. I am the Messiah that David said is his Lord, whom he called Lord, enthroned with Jehovah in heaven. And therefore, I, along with the Father, with whom I am seated, make up the identity of Israel's God, who is their one Lord, the one Jehovah. I am Is Kirius, Is Kurias, with the Father. I am O Theos Hemon, the God of them, the God of us. I am their God. You can't separate me from the identity of Israel's God. You can't separate separate me from the identity, identity of the one Lord of Israel. I am the one Lord, Israel's God, with the Father and the Spirit. And isn't it interesting that Mark 12, 35, 37 is Trinitarian? Because you have the Holy Spirit inspiring David, revealing to David making David aware that the Messiah is also your Lord because he shares in the identity of the one Lord who is Israel's God. And that's why he can sit enthroned with the one Lord, even though the one Lord and the one Lord, one Lord alone is enthroned in heaven. The one Lord of Israel alone is enthroned in heaven. But Messiah can share in the reign of the one Lord, be seated with the one Lord, be enthroned with the one Lord in heaven because he's one with the one Lord because he is Lord also. You see the point? The topic is zipit.com. And listen, is that clear? So Mark 12, 35, 37, irony of ironies. Three persons, the Holy Spirit who reveals to David the identity of Israel's God consisting of Jehovah, who in that context is the Father, and Jehovah's Son, the Messiah, who's one with him in essence, even though he's also human, Messiah also became human, which is why he can share in Jehovah's rule from the throne in heaven. A lot of meat there, isn't there? And by the way, folks, it's not simply my interpretation and my understanding that Psalm 121 clearly affirms, clearly affirms that Jesus will sit enthroned with the Father in heaven. That Psalm 110 is a prophecy speaking of the Messiah's heavenly enthronement. That he shares in the throne of Jehovah in heaven because he's one with Jehovah because he too is Jehovah God in the flesh. This is not simply my interpretation, it's Peter's interpretation who preached on the day of Pentecost filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit filled him to quote Psalm 1101 as proof that Jesus went to heaven and reigns in heaven at the right hand of God. Acts 2, Acts 2, 32 to 35. Acts 2, 32 to 35. Yeah. Now, can you imagine a more stupider person than ABC saying David is God because he says, set me up on high? 
Now, can you show me that there, set me up on high means, on high in heaven, set me up on high means to place me above my circumstances and above my enemies and subjugate them to me, but only someone who follows Muhammad would be that stupid. Acts 2, 32 to 35. Let's read. Therefore, all right, let's read from Acts 2, 32 to 35. Notice how Peter interprets Psalm 110, 1. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, <clears throat> and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, he hath shed forth this which ye now see and hear. For David, notice how he interprets Psalm 110, 1, is not ascended into the heavens. So David didn't go to heaven, but he saith himself, the Lord, which in Greek is Kyrios Kurios, Hebrew Jehovah, said to my Lord, Kyrios Kurios, sit thou on my right hand until I make thy fo foes thy footstool. Do you see that Peter understood Psalm 110.1 to be speaking of the enthronement of the Messiah in heaven? You see that? Do you see? So what do we learn, folks, from Mark 12, 29? If you read Mark 12, 29 to 37, you learn that Israel's God is the one Jehovah. And the Greek rendering for Yahovah Echad is Is Kirius or Heis Kurias or Kirius Is Estin or Kurias Heis Estin, which means one Lord or Lord, one he is. So they took the Greek word kurios, kurios, and substituted that word for the divine name Yahovah. So to say to a Greek-speaking Jew, is kurios, is kurios, is kurios, he would say amen, Jehovah's one, because that's the Greek way of saying one Jehovah. And an Israelite knows he has no other Lord in heaven who is enthroned besides Jehovah. An Israelite knows there's only one Lord in heaven who sits enthroned and only one Lord in heaven that he looks to, that's Jehovah. But then later on, Jesus says, oh, let me fill out the identity of the one Lord who is the God of Israel. David himself, by the Holy Spirit making it known to him, the Holy Spirit revealed to David that the Messiah is also his Lord who sits enthroned in heaven. So it's not just the Father who is the one Lord enthroned in heaven. The Messiah as well is the Lord that sits enthroned with the Father in heaven. And David knew that, which is why he confessed and worshipped and loved and trusted in the Messiah as his Lord seated at God's right hand in heaven. But wait, for the Messiah to be enthroned in heaven as David's Lord, even though David as an Israelite knows there's only one Lord in heaven who's enthroned and only one Lord that he looks to in heaven, and that is Jehovah. That means David knew by revelation of the Holy Spirit that Messiah is also part of the identity of the God of Israel, and therefore Messiah is Jehovah in the flesh, which is why he's more than his son. He's also his God, and David knew that. You got it? And David knew that. I hope we thoroughly dismantled Mark 12, 29. Mark 12, 29. Meaning, we showed its proper exegesis interpretation in the context. A context in which Jesus Christ, our Lord, unpacks the identity of Israel's God, who is their one Lord, one Jehovah, at, unpacks the identity of the one Lord as including the Father and the Messiah, his Son. A revelation made known to David by the Holy Spirit. So notice, the Holy Spirit revealed it to David. Jehovah said to David's Lord, the Messiah, sit in throne with me. Last time I checked, that looks like three. Jehovah, the Father, saying to Messiah, his Son, who is Jesus, who became flesh, who is David's Lord, sit in throne with me in heaven, and the Holy Spirit revealed that to David. Where's number four? Where's number five? 
Or why is it only two? Why is it three? Oh, welcome to the wonderful world of the Trinity. Welcome to the wonderful world of the Trinity. Wow. Okay. Now, what I want to do is maybe shut this stream down and start another live stream because I want to piggyback off of this. The Lord, our God, the Lord is one. In order to unpack Paul's Christology in 1 Corinthians as part of my ongoing series on what Paul meant in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 28, that Jesus, the Son, will subject himself to God at the end of the age when he destroys his last enemy or his, you know, his last enemy, death. You guys up for that? You want me to do it? You're up for another session? My brother's not here. I got nothing but time right now because it's a gloomy day outside. It's about to rain. But here's one thing. Is Hatun going to be live streaming before I do that? Does anyone know whether DCCI is planning to live stream right now? Terb, that's beyond my control because YouTube changed their policy so that if your previous sessions, you included children as part of the audience, they disabled comments. So that means I have to go back to each video and modify the settings. It's going to take too long. So there is no DCCI session, right? Okay. So if that's the case, folks, you sure, you guys, I got about 135. I'm still working for the goal of getting 200, right? More people to hear this wisdom from the Holy Spirit for the glory of Jesus, right? If you're sure you guys will come back, then I will start the second session within the hour. It's now 2.52 p.m. my time. I'll start at 3 p.m., which is an hour from now. It's now 2.52 p.m., my time, which Canadian time, that would make it 4.52 p.m., right? It's 4.52 p.m. In, in Canada and New York, Eastern Standard Time. So I can come back in an hour. Are you guys up for it? That means 3 p.m. where I'm at, which is 4 p.m. Central Standard Time, 5 p.m. Canadian time, New York time, Eastern Standard Time. You guys up for it? An hour from now. How many of you guys are up for it? If not, I'll just come back tomorrow. So 4.52, Karen, it's going to be 6 p.m. your time. So it's 6 p.m. your time, right? So Eastern Standard Time would be 6 p.m.? Okay, let me not confuse you guys. It's an hour from now. One hour from now. One hour and six minutes. One hour, six minutes. So Canada, that's going to be 6 p.m. your time, right? 6 p.m. your time? Okay. So Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. That's New York time, Canadian time which is 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. That's Chicago time. So one hour, six minutes. 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You guys are going to come? Zena, choose Jesus, all of you? All right. Lord Jesus willing. So, Karen, if it's 5.53 p.m. your time, that means 7 p.m. your time, Karen. Where in the world do you live that you're going to be 7 p.m.? One hour, six minutes, I'll be back. In Jesus' name, pray. The Spirit will fill us even more. And Christ will be glorified even more. So 4 p.m. your time, Magnificent Prophet. You have the same time as me. All right. See you guys soon. Lord willing, in an hour. Christ is risen, risen indeed.